Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is our very last um, in the fall semester series of the Academic Success Webinar Series. Um, I'm Ashley Bray. I'm the Disability and Learning Skills Advisor for the School of Continuing Studies. And I have with me Annie Vallott, who's the Learning, Skill, Learning Skills Advisor um, for Maine Campus. Hi, everyone. Um, so thanks again for joining us. Um, like I said, this is the last um, of the series for this fall semester. We will be picking up with this again in spring, um, probably mid-January after everyone has a chance to get settled in um, to classes and kind of get back in the routines of things. Um, but today we wanted to do just kind of a finals recap. So this is the third um, of three finals webinars that we've done. Um, the one that we did two weeks ago was on study skill schedules, which we'll touch on a little bit here. Um, and then last week we talked about uh, self-testing and test-taking strategies. As always, um, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on with ARC and um, any information on um, our webinars for the next spring semester, make sure you're following us on Facebook, which is ARC um, Georgetown is the handle, or Instagram ARC under slash Georgetown. Um, and as always, you can find um, our archived webinars on our website, which is academicsupport.georgetown.edu. Um, and you can go back there and review them from time management to the last two um, final. So I'm going to make sure everyone's muted. Um, all right. So today, um, webinar is going to be a little bit different of um, a format than what we've done in the past. Um, we're going to just kind of walk through some questions that um, students have submitted. Um, if you are joining us live and in person now, feel free um, to type any final exam questions that you may have into the chat box and we'll get to those. Um, and we can kind of reference some of the things, um, some of the slides that we have that correspond with some of the questions. So I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to start um, kind of thinking of some questions that they have regarding final exams, study skill strategies, self-testing, um, test strategies. Um, type those into the text box, but we'll go, get, go ahead and get started with some submitted questions. All right, so the first question is, how can I make sure I'm allotting enough time for each exam? Um, as an example, if there is an exam coming up, I will spend the majority of my time focusing on that, but then after, I won't feel as, I've, as if I've prepared for the next exam. How do I distribute my time? Um, which is a great question. It's something I think a lot of our students encounter. Um, you guys only have about a week worth of finals, and you guys are taking four or five classes, so it's a lot to cram in there. Um, my first suggestion would be to use a study schedule. Um, that's something I think that, especially as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the semester, which is on Thursday, and with um, your study days coming up, those can be really valuable in how you spend your time. And I think if you can do a little planning up front um, and looking at what that schedule looks like, what are kind of the goals of your study days, um, that will help you feel a little bit less stressed. Yeah, and I think what comes um, is a big factor when creating a study schedule is how comfortable you are with the coursework. So there may be an exam coming up that's a little bit more difficult for you, um, one that you feel a little bit more confident in. So when you are creating your study schedule, making sure you are allotting more time for the material for the class that you need a little extra prep work in. Um, and that could really just be kind of doing a gut check and saying, where am I in the at this point in the semester? What does my grade look like? Let me look back um, to review the material that we've learned the entire semester to determine how comfortable you are with the material. And I think that's a really important factor when creating a study schedule. And Annie, if you're feeling stretched for um, time to come up with a effective study skill strategy, do you have a couple of examples for, um, for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you're really feeling a bit stretched for time, um, feeling like time's winding down, 
forming study groups would be a really great idea. So figuring out peers in your classroom or peers that are taking the class and maybe in another section and okay. figuring out a time and figuring out a time to get together to really discuss the material. Um, we've talked about a great self-testing strategy is to talk out loud and teach the material out loud to somebody else. It's a really great strategy to effectively retain the information for longer periods of time. So forming study group strategy, forming a study group would be a really great strategy. Attending review sessions. So if your professors or TAs are offering review sessions, we highly encourage you to attend those. Um, there's going to be really important information that's covered. Other peers are going to bring up questions that they may have regarding concepts or information. So those are going to be some good times to clear up confusion for you or really strengthen the information that you already know. Um, definitely also another strategy is to maximize your waiting time. And when we talk about waiting time, it's those 10, 15 minute, 20 minute increments that we think isn't enough time to actually get anything done or be successful, but that time is actually really, really valuable. So this could be traveling on the bus to school, or it could be um, as, as you're walking on the treadmill for an hour, making sure that you're reviewing notes. So really using that time in between activities or in between class times or in between work and class to really utilize the study. And I actually think we have a couple examples of group study schedules. Um, so up here on the screen, this is just one example. It's great if you're a very visual learner. Um, as you can see, we have got some priorities for the week um, that are kind of regular everyday things and then priorities for the week that are special. So maybe office hours, if your professor is having office hours during final exam periods, um, or study days, take advantage of them, <laughs> and especially as we're getting closer to finals. Um, but this is great because it's color-coded, um, and you can kind of mark things out um, so you can visually see. And as Annie talked about kind of maximizing that waiting time, um, you can see um, little chunks, right? So on Monday between 3 and 5 o'clock, there's an hour. That's a great hour just to sit down, review a week of notes, um, you know, try to get in as much as you can during that time. So this is one example. And this is another example. So this is more broken down by um, what we call chunking, and it's something I think we'll get into in a little bit. But it's broken down by chapters, by day, and then by how much time you should be spending on um, each chapter. Um, and so I, I like this one. It's a really good visual. Yeah, and I really like this one. We've talked about this in a previous webinar. Um, but the act of actually using one day to prepare one certain topic or one certain chapter, and then using the next day to prepare the next chapter, but always going back to review the previously learned chapter um, in order to really keep that information fresh in your mind. So you're not always constantly going back and relearning information. You're just continuing to build on information and review the information over a period of days. And one thing I would also recommend, so if you look on like Tuesday, it says um, prepare chapter three for an hour and a half, and then you go to reviewing chapter two and reviewing chapter one, and those are for 30 and 15 minutes. That's kind of a natural place to take a break. Um, I know it seems like taking a break is very counterintuitive during this time of year, but I think it's really important um, for all of us, just especially as you're trying to review lots of new uh, material and try to you know, figure it out where it all fits in your brain. Take some time, allow yourself 15, 20 minutes of breaks in between um, each kind of chapter that you're reviewing or the new topic that you're reviewing to let your mind set and so you can kind of feel a little bit more refreshed and a little bit more creative when you're coming back to the material again. Great. So the next question that came in says, I took a lot of notes this semester and I feel really overwhelmed as to where to start studying. What suggestions do you have? Yeah, so another great question. Um, so I think first would just be to review and edit your notes. And the it might seem um, like this is something that you've already done, but reviewing and editing your notes locks in the information. And what I tell students about when you're reviewing and editing, editing your notes, you're condensing it to kind of the main points. And you want to put those main points, those main themes in your own words. Because when we're taking information that we're learning from a textbook or we're learning from a lecture or we're learning um, from just our notes and we're putting it into our own words, it helps cement the information and we're able to easily recall it back on the exam. Um, the other way I would um, 
kind of address this is if you have a lot of notes and you're feeling overwhelmed, um, chunk info based on topic or lecture date. So going back to that study schedule that we looked at, um, which I'll try to flip to, this is chunking, right? So you're preparing chapter one, and then you're reviewing chapter one and preparing chapter two, and then you're reviewing chapter two and chapter one and preparing chapter three. And what I like about this chunking is like Annie said, you're building upon each other. All right. So the next question we have is, when I'm trying to study and read my textbook late at night, at times it gets boring and I lose focus. Is there a way that I can better stay focused while reading? Yep, this is a great question. I think this definitely um, comes into play with a lot of our students. So you're trying to be you know, up late at night reading textbooks, heavy material, and it's just not sinking in, or it's just becoming um, kind of fuzzy reading. So definitely we recommend don't read while you're tired. So really trying to figure out the times of your day when you are more clear-headed and more able to focus. Um, if you really have to read late at night, try reading each, each section with a question in mind. So thinking about what type of information you're seeking in that paragraph or in that chapter to really help you stay actively engaged while you're reading. So that's really important. Annie, where could you come up with those questions or where would um, you could get ideas about where those questions should come from? Yeah, that's a great question. So typically in textbooks, there are discussion questions either in the beginning or the end of the chapter that really help readers um, kind of keep questions in mind that are going to be addressed throughout the reading. So those are really great discussion questions to kind of guide your reading. Also, any types of questions that come from discussions or come from review sessions, those mm -hmm. are really things to keep in mind as you're reading. Again, you're searching, you're seeking for information, you're going to stay actively engaged while reading. And I, know, I think another great suggestion for this is if you are losing focus, it's late at night, is it the environment? Can you kind of do a little change of scenery? Um, we talk a lot about it a lot. You shouldn't be like studying, laying down in bed with the TV on. I think a lot of times when you're trying to study late at night or read a textbook and you're laying it down, it's hard to stay focused. So can you go to the library? Can you carve out a spot in Healy Family Student Center? Um, would a change of environment kind of just help you um, refocus um, and really make sure you're concentrating on that material and not getting too easily distracted? Yep, I think a change of environment is a great idea. Also, turning off your phone, leaving your phone's notifications, put those away. So really trying to eliminate all distractions while you're reading, especially if it's really heavy reading or really dense material, making sure your environment is as distraction reduced as necessary or as possible. Great. All right, so our next question is, I try not to cram, but sometimes that happens, which it does. And what are some last minute strategies that I can use? Um, so again, we don't endorse cramming, but we also realize that sometimes it does happen. Um, one way to avoid this, again, is going back and setting up a study schedule. Um, but Annie, do you have any suggestions of kind of last minute tips if they do need to cram what we can do? Yeah, absolutely. We definitely recommend reviewing the oldest material first. So especially if you have a cumulative exam coming up, um, and you're trying to cram all this information in, making sure that you're definitely looking back at the oldest material because that's probably less fresh in your mind. So making sure you're reviewing that oldest material first, creating some sort of outline or organizer, whether in a, a visual representation, whether in word form, to really combine the information. Either it's coming from your notes, it's coming from professor's PowerPoints, and you're trying to really get all this information in your mind, organizing the information in such a way that helps you remember it is really going to be an effective strategy. Yeah, and what I also really love to kind of keep in mind for this, if you do have to cram, is um, when you're setting up kind of your study list for the day, are you taking into account um, that the subjects that we're learning can really be divided into kind of three categories. So memory dependent, so those are subjects like biology, history, and geography. So that contains a lot of material that needs to be re read and reviewed. Um, problem solving subjects are things like math or physics, right? Um, you're more interactive with material. And then interpretation based subjects such as English and literature, writing a language class or any papers you have to write. So for most effective 
studying, you should alternate between each category of subjects and long study periods. So um, keeping in mind what your learning style is and what your what type of category of information you're learning, and then how do you alternate those throughout the day um, if you if you do kind of have to cram some information in. Yep, absolutely. And we can't stress this enough, rewriting information in your own words is really a helpful um, retention strategy. So as you're reviewing, as you're creating outlines, again, like Ashley mentioned, putting things in your own words, not what your professor's interpretation of it or the um, author of the textbook, but your own words is really going to help with retention later on. Perfect. So the next question that came in says, what are your main recommendations for self-testing? Yeah, so this is a great question, and I think oops, we have a couple of slides on that. Um, so I think kind of my go-to solid recommendations would be flashcards. Um, they're super old school, but I think even just writing down the information to the flashcard before you review it is another way just to kind of solidify the information into your mind. Um, Quizlet is a great app that you can use and download either on your phone or your computer or iPad or wherever, and you can quiz yourself on um, questions, and that can kind of help you get into that practice testing. Um, I think also completing practice exams is probably my biggest recommendation. Um, and when you're completing a practice exam, it's not just about like actually sitting down to do it, but can you recreate that environment? So get yourself in the environment where it's quiet. Can you go to the library? Um, you know, that your phone's off, that you turn your notifications off, that you're not, you know, don't have Amazon up as you're doing it. Really create that practice environment. Even set a timer just to see how long it takes you to do it. Do you kind of have some idea? Yeah, I think a great suggestion also is to create associations with the material. And by this, we mean thinking about real world applications or real world examples that can connect the material to certain scenarios that make sense to you. Um, so coming up with examples or coming up with things that you can relate to is going to really cement the information and help you remember it during the exam. Yeah, and so again, some other um, suggestions are use different outlines or, or notes depending on the course and material rate. Um, your study strategy might be look a little bit different for math than it does for psychology or for your language course. Um, as we talked about before, cards, questions, are you um, chunking into meaningful clusters? Um, are you working through practice problems? Are you, can you redraw the information from memory or can you teach it to someone else? Um, again, those self-tests uh, self are really, really important. And can you study in groups with a peer or with a voice memo app? Sometimes having someone else there um, helps kind of break out the monotony of studying um, and can kind of give you some ideas or a different take on the information. Yeah, and the voice memo app is a really great thing if you don't have a peer or a group to study with. Like Ashley mentioned, talking out loud with the material is really helpful and you can record yourself with the voice memo, memo app and then listen back to it. So it's all about checking for understanding. You can have your notes next to you as you're listening back to yourself. And it's also going to be a good way to assess whether you really understand the information, you're able to verbally explain it to someone else, or you need to go back and really um, kind of dive deeper into that material. Great. Um, and again, I think this is one of our last questions. So if you do have any other um, questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box. But we'll go over this, um, highlight a little bit of a resource and just kind of a wrap up. Um, so it's not clear what I'm supposed to be studying because there's a lot of information and my professor isn't very specific as to what the premise of the exam will be. How do I narrow what I study and spend my time on? Yeah, so a great recommendation is to really look at your syllabus and it, syllabi can be divided based on core material and elaborative material. Um, so there's core material that really consists of important principles, theories, formulas, diagrams, graphs, things that have just been constantly discussed in class, in the readings, if there's quotes and illustrations, things that are really core to the foundation um, of the class. Um, the elaborative material may just be kind of the extraneous material or um, kind of examples mm -hmm. um, when it comes to kind of the core material. So really being able to parse out that different type of material could be a good way to start really diving into this information. I think also kind of using your skills and looking at where there's themes across the materials or there are areas that are more relatable than others. Can you see a kind of an underlying theme through all 
the semester. Um, and kind of paying attention to those cues, I think, will also help you um, in strategizing of how to kind of attack the studying for this exam. But I think this is a great question to ask your professors and TAs, right? This yeah. is a great question. If you're not sure of what's going to be on the exam, if you have all of this information and you're not sure where to begin or what's going to be assessed, ask your, ask your professor TAs. Um, you know, try and parse down and kind of pare down the information to really make sure you are kind of diving deeper and really focusing on the correct information. Um, especially at review sessions, this would be a great way to just, hey, I need some clarification on a certain concept or just kind of figure out um, what specific material you really want to focus on. Um, so we just wanted to highlight um, one of the resources that we have on our website. And like I've mentioned, we have our two previous um, final exam webinars archived on our website under the academic support tab. Um, there's a tab for academic success webinars. One is just on study, uh, a study schedule. So you can use that to set up your study schedule for final exams. Um, and the other is on self-testing and test-taking strategies. So two really important things. Um, they're not super long, about a half an hour. You guys can kind of listen to, um, and that will give you some more information that we referenced today. But on our website, we also have um, a final exam prep worksheet. Um, and I think this is a great thing that you can download, or if you don't want to use your printer ink, we do have them at the front here in the office at Levy 335. Um, you can come and kind of do this. I would recommend doing this now, right? Um, classes are ending, final exams, kind of get a hold of where you're at in those classes and what you need to do. Um, so yeah, we can kind of walk through each of those steps. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a way to really capture, kind of evaluate what the information is going to look like on your final exam for each of your courses. So listing out all of your courses, um, evaluating where you where you are at in each of the courses, so maybe estimating your grade in the courses and where you want to get to at the end of the semester. The second part is really important. This is information I would look up now. So the date, the time, and the test location of your final exam. Let's make sure we have that information before next week so that there is no confusion whether or not um, there, where your classroom is and you're not rushing around kind of causing a little bit more anxiety. So making sure that you have that information. If you're not sure of where it is, that information is listed on the registrar's office website. Um, that last part, so the test format. So really figuring out how is the test going to be formatted? Is it multiple choice? Is it essay? Is it short answer? Is it true false? So figuring out um, and asking those questions, you know, within the next last few days of the class uh, or as you enter study days and so making sure you understand the test format for each of your final exams. Cool. Okay. So then moving along, so the content covered. So then you're going to evaluate what is the content covered? Is it chapters one through six? Is it just on a certain chapter or a certain book that was read in class? So figuring out where is that information coming from? Um, and then content sources. This kind of plays into what I just said. Where's, where are you going to find that information? Is it coming from lecture notes or handouts? Is it from a textbook? Is it from PowerPoint slides? So where are you going to gather the information from that you're actually going to pin down and really start creating um, effective outlines and study guides? And then a to-do list, so figuring out what things that you need to do. Do you have missing assignments that you need to turn in? Are flashcards really going to be helpful to prepare for this exam? Do you need to rewrite your notes or form a study group? So really evaluating the things that you want to get done in order to prepare for each of your final exams. And the last part, we've hit this home a lot in a few of our webinars. Test prep strategies are really, really important. So really being able to check for understanding, making sure you really understand the material thoroughly. So figuring out what types of strategies you're going to do for each of your final exams. Like I mentioned, are you going to form a study group? Is it better a one-on-one -on -one setting with a partner or a peer? Do you need to make flashcards through Quizlet? Or are you going to do a self-test through Quizlet? Can you practice taking old exams or quizzes? Um, you know, are you going to go to review sessions for your class? So figuring out what types of strategies you're going to embrace and kind of utilize as you prepare for these next, what is it, week and a half before final exams? Maybe not even. Not well, <laughs> just a week, I yeah, think. Yeah, just a week. All right. And then just some final words of luck and advice. Um, good luck. Take some time to make sure that you're staying rested. 
Um, I know it can be alluring to kind of skip sleep and just try to study as much as you can. You need to, you need rest in order to do well. Um, it, your body needs rest to convert all that information you've learned and you study and convert it into your long-term memory so you can recall it on the exam. So try to stick to a normal sleeping schedule. Try to get eight, nine hours of sleep. Um, if you can't do that every night, just make sure you're at least getting eight hours of sleep the night before your test. Um, eat healthy. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. You're not skipping meals or just relying on caffeine to get you through. Make sure you, you know, throw in a vegetable or fruit in there. Um, find a balance. Make sure you're balancing um, school with all the other things we know that you guys have going on. So make sure you're kind of keeping that balance, um, taking a couple of breaks, taking um, a couple of hours to go meet with friends for a dinner or just to hang out. You know, find that balance. Make sure you still have some moments of fun um, in your planned into your week. Um, just pay attention to like your stress management, right? Um, know the resources that we have on campus. You have CAPS. Um, take some time to do a couple of deep breaths exercises, do some meditation, some yoga, working out, going for a walk, whatever it is that you do to de-stress, um, I would try to find a few ways to incorporate that in there. Um, just keep a positive mindset. I think that's some of the biggest advice. You know, don't doubt yourself, trust yourself, um, have confidence in the, all the work that you've been doing throughout the entire semester. Um, I know it can feel stressful at times, but you've gotten this far, um, so have confidence in yourself to, to take it to the next level. All right, um, and so finally, if no one else has any other webinar or final exam questions, um, you can provide us feedback at tinyurl.com backslash ARC webinar feedback. Um, please feel free to go. Um, just it's a couple of questions. You can give us suggestions um, for topics for next semester um, and we will definitely be in to take those into consideration um, like I said this is our last webinar um, for this semester you can get check all of our archived ones on our website academic support at georgetown.edu um, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and make sure you stay tuned for um, the spring webinar series and good luck everyone with finals good luck have a great night